Hi, welcome to One Word a Day. I'm Sophie, your pilot into the universe of Chinese. We are going to continue on our journey of learning just a little bit more Chinese a day. Um, today, we are going to do another off chain. Off chain that I name it this way because otherwise, the what we are going to talk about today is based on what we talked about yesterday.、Uh, I call it mark of chain. So it's conditional. On yesterday, but this one is off the chain. Like there is no, there is a certain freedom. Allow me that if I see something that's worth sharing, I'm going to capture capture it right away instead of waiting waiting for its chance to share、uh, common words with、um, with other phrases and then I can add it in. Okay, so this is what I saw.、Uh, this is called practical. Uh, writing, so this is not like poetic or literature related, but it's functional. It's what I saw in an email from school、um, about the end of school year, and、uh, school notifies students to pick up from lost and found. So I noticed that in the particular school, my kid is seeing that they have three language versions、um, in the same letter. I was like, "Wow, this is a good opportunity of language in use、um, that you can you can see and you can tell like the three languages." Um, English, of course, that's the default language, and then Chinese Hispanic, because where we're living in,、um, happen to the city have、um, pretty high percentage of Asian and Hispanic population. So it's a diverse, and I, I appreciate that school、uh, show the diversity and really offer other languages、um, in their school notice. So this is supposedly the correct, most you know. Educational institution、um, issued letter and to show you、uh, same、um, correctly translated, complete and correctly translated versions. And here we are not going to do、uh, like a deep dive into each character. What does it mean? Because we don't simply don't have enough time for that here. I just want to give you an overall sense of sequen sequencing <laughs> or sequential. Um, order of the two,、uh, the three, well, two languages.、Uh, here I show you the three, just to give you the the context, and then、uh, overall visual sense of how much information is put there. So, Hispanic is the longest.、Uh, oh, sorry, my alarm.、Um, Hispanic is the longest, and then English, Chinese is the shortest,、um, because Chinese in the way it. It works is each character has multiple meanings. Okay, so in English too, nothing unusual. But Chinese doesn't have the inflections, so it doesn't really have a lot of small words or connector words.、Um, so that way, it can really condense just what you're talking about. The key point there: very few connector or small words. Okay, so now let's dive in. Still dive in、uh, into each sentence. So there are four sentences. Stay with me if you can.、Um, I know it's not as、uh, beautiful or succinct、um, as the other episode, but this is really giving you a, a, a good view of how the two languages in use in action, but have their different、uh, sequences. So here I want I, I put the labels of yeah, it's pretty. It looks like a, a mess, right?、Um, but bear with me. The verb, the verbs, are just dark. Purple color、um, because they are actions, so they're kind of a heated, right? Announce they're dead. They don't change their static, so they're blue. Remember it that way. Adjectives they are not really the core thing, so they're lighter colors. Connectors they're even lighter, like they don't really have essential message in there. So I call it a connector. The small words in gray, and then I have big chunks of descriptors, either prepositions. Or other type of descriptors, and so here by placing this way, we lay out the language. Okay, lang words、um, in action of how they are relating to each other, how they are placed in a sentence. So here, let's go. First line: Good morning, right? English: Good morning, good adjective. Morning noun, but in Chinese, it's a switch. Not only the morning is in the front, but good actually turned into an action word. We call it 早上好 morning, good. Like make your morning good. That kind of sense. I mean, 
in a way, it's even more uh, more appropriate, right? Your morning, good or bad, is what you make it to be, in, to a large degree. Um, okay, and then we have this collected as the verb. So yeah, positionally about like that. But instead of we have the connector word in the front, we have the connector word in like right after. So we we have only very few zhao liao guo, jiang like four basic um, Chinese language have the carry the function to show you the tense. So if it's a past tense or perfect tense, in this case it's past perfect tense um, that it's wait. This is present perfect tense. I mean, something looking from this uh, current, the present um, point of view, it's something done, right? So that's present perfect tense. And we use simply use a look, one word um, and a simple stroke to, to, to show you, okay, that's something done, already happened. And you see here, it actually is the very end of English. We moved in the front. Um, and then we have this um, sweaters and items, different items. Okay, the nouns are shifted to the back. And then the definitions, the descriptors of uh, where the things are placed, right? Of all these nouns are placed in the front. So in a way you can see collection, collect, collected, that action ber verb, collected where, right? In our lost found. So in our lost found is a definition of where you can find that thing. Um, so the action were uh, sort of like described by here, like this is a condition or further explanation specifications. So for Chinese, we place that in front of what it is describing. And the, the main thing we always place coming afterwards. So this condition were placed in front and the items in the same idea, items left behind on campus, right? This is like placed in front of this group of nouns, okay? And then you can see um, the adjective, adjectives and the nouns, like they are in a similar position, but <laughs> there's a, uh, a difference here. So many sweaters and different items like Many is actually describing both the sweaters and different items, right? So we have xu duo is up here, but we move this rosy pink whole section before the sweaters and different items um, because they are further definition of what they are, right? Um, so many is a kind of a descriptor in its own way, but it's one um, adjective descriptor, but here is the whole thing, a kind of a, not even a phrase, a segment of several words strung together as a descriptor. And they are following the, the first descriptor, one word description, and the noun is placed behind. So basically that's the main Chinese structure, uh, different from English. English put you the main information first and then define them later. Like short descriptors, may, like adjectives, may place in front of the, the main thing. But the Chinese would place the main idea in the, in the last. So either the, the verb or the nouns, um, they are placed in the last. Anything that describing them, any long, even longer descriptors uh, that placed in front. Sometimes that causes a translation problem because um, I mean, left behind on campus for words uh, are not badly, you know, heavy, but sometimes it's, it could be really front heavy, a descriptor, blah, 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 and then you talk about something. And then you finally know what it's talking about. And that caused some problems. So Chinese sometimes translate what we'll do, this, you know, main thing, main message, message put in, and then we'll kind of break it down in another sentence to further describe the condition of the, the, the main idea. So, but in such case, it's handleable, right? So um, it's manageable in the front, place in the front of the main idea. Okay, second. So now you know, we are starting to look for the main idea, sorted as the 
verb, right? So sorted where, right? That's kind of descriptor. Um, so again, this is a place in front of that. And you can see have been, right? It's passive tense, it's perfect tense. And Chinese wizards use one character, e. that's it. And item, item, and then um, students, you can see it's positioned here. So here is one thing that sometimes we translate. We don't, because we don't have four, two, we do have an end, but things like a four, two, such as small connectors, small words or connectors, they don't have uh, concrete meanings, but uh, they form the logical sense for, for the language users to know, uh, okay, it's so for the students and to identify. So these are not like <laughs> meaning, essential meaning uh, for Chinese. So sometimes when we translate that, we, we don't exactly for uh, have a four correspondent word. So we convert it into a verb. So qing is like a please ask. It's like action word, turn it into action. So please ask your students to go there. And again, we don't have a two, we turn it into action word, qianlang, like a leave for that place or go to that place um, and then identify. And here is a use and, right? In English, when you use and, uh, sometimes it's not clearly marked like, what, what, you mean the two equally like that? or actually sometimes, and in English means a sequentially. So you, you go there first to identify, and then you can pick up. So there is a sequential. So Chinese, we just make it explicit. So here is the sequential, it means, and then um, pick it back, okay? And okay, here I put a different, <laughs> different color. It's a descriptor, but because I, I try to show you uh, the prepos prepositions, and the nouns. So it's, it looks a little bit chaotic. So that's why I have to put a pure color background. Um, okay, since we're talking about that, you can see it's at the end of English, but then it's sort of moved uh, forward to embedded in the front. So you, you see check, ask your student to check. So that's the main action word. And then we have qing, that's ask your student, that's the ask. And then uh, I think I put a misplaced one. Check is the other action word. Um, okay, so you can see the main action word again, kind of shifted its position to almost the very end. Um, and then the definitions of where to check or where the items are placed, all that are going to be placed like removed to the front of it. Okay, so this section of like before school, during and after, you, you can see there, there's a logic in there, right? So before, during and after. And in, in, uh, in Chinese, we translate that zai, shang xue qian. So shang xue is a school, actually it's an action word, it's a going to school, like a schooling. So before schooling, and we, we have this, we have to use, uh, two, we don't have like a before in one um, word or one character you can describe what is before. We have to say zai, x qian, so um, before, <laughs> something in front of that thing. And always this structure, so it's a little bit awkward. I mean, you need to get used to. Ke jian xiu xi is a recess and wu chan, so, or, mm, I didn't, Theme that one. So, or is a connection. So this way or that way is during. So during this time, again, we don't exactly, I mean, it's not that uh, direct corresponding. So we make it explicit, turn it into time, like uh, uh, recess or uh, lunch, like a time. We don't really say, <laughs> we don't have this during concept. So that's a cumbersome expression for Chinese. Um, so it says the time of these two activities, there's no during there. So we have to say it another way. And, um, and it's EG, like it's like afterthought, like, oh, and this one, don't forget about this one. Uh, so 放学后, um, here it skipped 在. 
So we can also insert Xi, it's like a position like at this um, after school. Um, Ho is after. <laughs> so after the schooling, Feng Xue is like get out of school, that action again. Um, so this portion we placed it way before uh, the check, the main action word there. Okay. 请让你的学生, okay, 学生, students are at to check. So these again shift to the very end of the message for any missing items. So missing items here is translated to here. Um, so again, these are the main concepts, right? Um, and it's placed at the toward the end of the sentence. Um, again, here, Chinese translation is a little bit of verb, verbiage, like a lot of um, redundant information. Is whether you have something you missed instead of any missing. So, so in this way, you can see English is much more succinct than the Chinese. Here is Chinese as somebody tried to explain to you exactly. So there's no confusion. And of course, like uh, you can skip that. Um, you can just simply say 查看丢失的物品 instead of say 是否有自己. Like this, this, whether you have, it's your own like identify. So that's what somebody translated this to make it explicit. And then um, 过道上的 item. So here is a little bit of flexibility because 放在过道的桌子上 is defining or describing where uh, the position of the items, right? What, this noun. So it can be uh, placed before this de description, uh, I mean, before the noun. Um, but here somebody translated, use it a little bit creatively. It said, okay, you're going to check but where are you going to check? So they placed this um, descriptor of the noun originally to make it as if it's a descriptor of the check, like where you're going to check. I mean, in a sense, it's, it's, it's correct, right? <laughs> is it the item is somewhere or you check somewhere, right? Um, it's getting wordy. Okay, let's get through this quick. Um, and then there are some time descriptors, time descriptors, you can see they are both placed before the action word. So before the action, before the action in Chinese versus English is reverse. The main idea, say it first, the Chinese keep it. <laughs> Make sure you listen to the end. Um, that's the main idea, I guess. Um, so the whole thing, items not picked up by a certain day, right? These are all like whole this chunk are describing the item. So you can see the items placed them over here. And then you have this purple segment placed over here. And wait, it's like not negation. It's this, ling qu de, is the, the verb, but they are all used to describe the item. So you can see they're all kind of re reposition this in front, and then this in front, and then the item. Okay. Um, and again, uh, this, will be donated. So it's a future passive tense. Um, Chinese, we don't have all that complexities. We just use one character, jiang means something's going to happen. We don't have a <laughs> passive or uh, positive, no, 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 active, okay, active or passive. We don't have that. Um, it's implied like you are going to donate this stuff. And it's not the stuff donate, it's implied. Uh, that I feel is a more humane side of uh, the Chinese language. Like active or passive, we didn't make it explicit because for majority, majority, 99% of the time, the listener can figure out based on the context because here it's pretty obvious, like it's donate the item, right? So it's item being donated. So we don't, just don't need to say that. We say this item will donate and you figure out that's be donated, okay? And warm regards, oh, sorry, I put, <laughs> this should be the, the cold one because it's a noun, but I guess I place that, <laughs> you can regard it as a, a verb too because wen hou by itself is, is a verb. But if you say wen xin de, wen xin de, make it um, adjective, 
with this du connector. This is an explicit adjective and for grammatical correction, it's always a noun after an, um, a descriptor, an adjective. Okay, and you can see doctor so-and-so, it's placed at the end. So there's some interesting um, misplacement while you translate between the two language. So recap of what we talked about is quite a mess. Um, thank you for staying with me till the end. Um, recap, Chinese, we have the main ideas placed at the end of the message. So if you have a chunk of like this portion chunk to describe this is the main idea, Chinese will place this almost like an anchor. You have to listen the whole time and then you, you hear, oh, what you're exactly talking about. That's the same, right? So the whole definition, defining or describing of that element are going to be placed in front. The, and then Chinese doesn't have tense or inflections for, for the most part. So we only have very few, um, you know, such sim symbols to show you it's a future, a past or something done. Um, it's very simplified in that sense. And in a sense, it's not strict either. So you don't have a finer definition of tense. So like time-wise, like um, Chinese is not so sensitive to time. Probably that's not that a big property or issue back then, right? Um, and then, so the definition, the description apply to both the, the nouns or the verbs. So anything, the action, the description, the conditional of the action are going to place in the front. Um, but when it comes to describing um, like a simple English adjectives in front of a noun, that's the same English Chinese. So we have descriptor, uh, adjectives placed in front of a noun, same structure there, okay? All right, cash into the currency of thinking by one word a day with Sophie. See you another day.